on the little book of Titus. If you look there, it's right after 1st and 2nd Timothy and right before the book of Hebrews. And you can turn there. I want to give you a little history lesson before we get to Titus. The Apostle Paul wrote the epistle to one of his Timothys. You see, he led to the Lord Timothy, Titus, and Onesimus, the slave of Philemon, on his mission trips. And these were his sons in the Lord. Now he taught them to understand the Old Testament. He taught them how to rightly divide the word. And he taught them how to preach. The book of Titus, as well as the book of 1 Timothy, was written between Paul's first and second imprisonment in Rome. It was written somewhere between A.D. 62 and A.D. 67. That means after death, if you don't know that. It's similar in content to 1 and 2 Timothy in that it deals with the same kind of apostate Christians that it deals with in 1st and 2nd Timothy and which Paul writes about these apostate Christians in 2nd Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 through 5 I just want to read that for you for there for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine mm -hmm. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Mm -hmm. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. And he's talking to Titus. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So this is the words that he's given to Timothy, also the words that he's given to Titus. Chapter 1, Paul gives a warning to Titus about his need for being ethical and spiritual in his preaching and to be aware of the people whom he is ministering to because they are known to be people that steal, lie, and are lazy. Ring a bell? <laughs> <laughs> Not an action. <laughs> Chapter 2 is a warning that sound doctrine includes rules on moral living as well as biblical ideology and theology. Chapter 3 deals with the need for all Christians to do good works, although works has no part in their salvation. Now, this book was written to Titus by Paul when Titus was on the Isle of Crete. Keep that in mind. And we believe that all scriptures are given by inspiration of God and, and is given for reproof and instruction and righteousness so that these scriptures are just as profitable for us today as they were in that day for Titus to the people he was preaching to. Now, just a little bit about Titus. He's mentioned 12 times in the Bible. Most all of those are found in 2 Corinthians. And Titus, after he was converted by Paul, he followed Paul to Jerusalem. There he was the test case for Gentile circumcision. Then, during Paul's third missionary journey, he sent Titus to deal with the troubles at Corinth. And along with those, he sent a very stern letter to the people, the Corinthians. Titus succeeded in the work that Paul sent him to do. He then went to the Isle of Crete to do mission work at Dalmatia. And you'll find that in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. Titus was characterized by two main things. 
First was his commitment to pastoral ministry. And we find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, where it says, But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward, of his own accord he went unto you. The second characteristic that he was known for was his joy. We find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 13, where Paul says, Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joy we were for the joy of Titus. So Titus was a, was a joyful person because his spirit was refreshed by all of you. So now let's go and look at what Paul said in his letter to Titus. And I told you that I was going to break it down pretty much word by word. It says, Paul here, a servant of God. This is the only time in all of Paul's letters that he refers to himself as a servant of God. And he truly was a servant. All the other letters he refers to himself a called apostle or an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he even says it later on in, in this particular verse. But here he said that he is a servant of God. Now if Paul is to be used as a model Christian, which we should, we must know that he was never out. Paul was always doing something for the Lord. And that ought to teach us something. He was always doing a servant's work and took pleasure in doing it. We must realize that we as Christians are also to be servants for the Lord. We're to do his work. Let me ask you something. Would you rather be a servant for the Lord knowing that the service that you conduct for him earns you an eternal reward. Would you rather be that kind of servant, knowing that you're going to get an eternal reward for what you do for him? I would. Would you not rather serve the Lord than a temporary monarch or some other being some supernatural or natural being. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Paul was at one time a servant of somebody else. Yeah. And I'll get to that. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Acts 23 verse 1 tells us that Paul was a servant of God. It said, And Paul, earnestly beholding the counsel, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. He was a servant of God. Now watch this. Paul was a servant before he knew Christ as his Savior. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.13, here's what he says about himself. He says, who was a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Yep. He was a servant, but he was a certain a servant unto the devil. Yeah. He was a servant unto someone else, just as all lost people are. And he did it for himself. Let me show you something in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 14. He said, he said, what do you mean he did it for himself? Paul speaking says, and I profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. 
He did it for himself. He was serving another God. He was serving Satan. Mm -hmm. Then it says, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul did not want to be confused with the false prophets in those days. He didn't want to be called one of the counterfeit apostles that was there. That, matter of fact, the Word of God says that in the church of Ephesus that they were liars. Okay? If you turn into to Revelation chapter 2, when it's talking about the seven churches, and it talks about the church at Ephesus in particular, it says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say there are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Mm. So God said they were liars, they were liars. Yes. So Paul didn't want to be confused, didn't want to be put in the crowd of these counterfeit apostles. Paul said that he is commissioned by and for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who he's going to work for. Now, and he makes no, no bones about it, he belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Since many of our day are claiming to be apostles, and it don't take you long to turn on your TV or your radio or go on your phones to YouTube and look up these preachers, and you'll find very quickly false teachers. Yes, sir. False mm -hmm. preachers. Yep. Some of them claiming to be apostles, mm -hmm. but they are not. Mm -mm. The apostles are all dead, first of all. Yeah. So it doesn't take long to figure out who these people are. Listen, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 tells us that the mystery of iniquity does already work. It's here today. It was there in their day. It's here today. Yes. And in 1 John chapter 4, verse 3, we're told that the spirit of Antichrist is already in this world. Mm -hmm. It didn't say the Antichrist. It said the spirit of Antichrist is already in this world. And believe me, he is here. It don't take 10 seconds to figure out who's behind a lot of things that's going on in this world today. Now, this is what it says. Paul, servant of God, and the apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. Now, if I were to ask the question, like I said this morning, in this auditorium today, who is God's elect? I would probably hear answers like Israel is God's elect. The church is God's elect. The individual born again believer is God's elect. Yes. But they're all three wrong. God's elect is his son, Jesus Christ. Wow. That is God's elect. Now, You look this up, it is according to his faith that one may have the hope of everlasting life. You say, what do you mean by that? It's according to his faith. It's not according to our faith. It's according to his faith. Galatians 2.20 For I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ which liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live how? By the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Not our faith. <laughs> it's his faith. God's elect. This is beautifully illustrated in Mark chapter 4. See, our faith is weak. 
Jesus comes one day and says to his disciples, he says, hey, come and get in the boat. I'm going to take you to the other side. They come. They all get in the boat. While they're on the little boat ride going over to the other side, up comes a terrible storm. Well, what did the disciples do? They all panicked. Read the story in Mark chapter 4. What did Jesus say? Verse 40. You have no faith. They thought they were going to die. They panicked. They had no faith. Now watch this. Yet the boat got to the other side. Not a hair on anybody's head was hurt. True. Why? Because it wasn't her faith. It was the promise that Jesus made that I'll get you to, to the, the other side. side. It was by his faith Amen. that they got to the other side. That's right. true. What a picture. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 tells us this. If we believe not, now get this, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. He is faithful. He is. He makes a promise and he cannot lie. Yes. He cannot deny himself. That's part of who he is because he is God manifested in the flesh. Then it says, Paul, a servant of God and the apostle Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. So how do I know it's Jesus Christ? Because he's the only one that had faith. Did the Israelites have faith? No. Does the church have faith? No. Do we as individuals have faith all the time? No. Jesus has faith all the time. Beautifully said. Yep. It says, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after Godliness. And the acknowledging of the truth. Listen, you may have knowledge of Christ. The demons do. Yes, they do. Yeah. They know who he is. Sure they do. But if you don't acknowledge who he is, that he is the son of the living God, you will never be saved. Right. And you'll never be a servant of God. It's true. You have to Acknowledge who he is. This says acknowledge <clears throat> the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. After godliness. Here are some of the things which we are told to do as Christians to be godly. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says the Christian is to be a follower of God. That's what we're to be. A follower of God. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 21 tells us that we are to walk in his footsteps. You go on further with that and you find out in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 16 and 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 says not only are we to walk in his footsteps but we are to walk in his footsteps so that we can encourage other people, other believers, to follow him. That's why we walk in his footsteps. Paul's ministry was patterned after the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ here on this earth. Then it says in verse 2, and I said I didn't know if I could get here or not, but I'm going to get here. In the in hope of eternal life. Listen, our hope is not a fantasy. It's not a dream. It's not a blue sky the a theory. Our hope is based on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. righteousness. Yes, sir. That's Good what stuff. our hope is. Yes, sir. Now, it is a certainty. Our hope is sure. It is certain. We have that hope. Look here. Our hope is not complete yet. The Bible tells us that we are looking for 
the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have hope. We hope for the glorious appearing. We have the blessed hope of the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, let me show you something. This hope is not for our souls. Our souls are saved. True. They're going to heaven. Yep. This hope is for a new body. One like an unto to Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah. The Bible says that when we see him, we shall see him as he is, and yeah. we shall be, be like him. Like him. Yeah. Yep. Good. Our hope is for a new body. It's a certainty. Now, Romans chapter 8, 24 says this. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? If you see it, you don't have to hope for it. You've got it. It's unseen yet. We don't know what this body's going to look like. The Bible says we're going to know as we are known, so I assume it's going to look something like we look now. But we don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but we know it's going to be a glorified body. Will be. One like under Christ. Mm -hmm. We're looking for the blessed hope. When someone asks you, are you going to heaven? Our answer should never be, well, I sure hope so. Yeah, that's right. We have a blessed hope. Yeah. You know why we have it? Because God made a promise. Mm -hmm. If thou shalt accept my son as your personal savior, I will give you eternal life. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is a promise. Yes. God cannot dishonor himself. Mm -hmm. Okay? He cannot deny himself. Our promises recorded in James 1 18, which tells us that we were begotten by the word of truth. The Holy Spirit of God uses the word of God through a man of God to lead us to be a Christian. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins. Yes. And once we accept him as our personal Savior, he seals us until the day of redemption. So our hope is based just like I said before, on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We have a sure hope and a certain hope. Hope this afternoon in the promise that God gave through his elect, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now watch this, and I'll close my good son. My assurance is contained in John 15, 3, which tells me I am clean through the word. My joy is found in John 25, 24, which declares the promise of everlasting life to all who believe this word, the word that I just told you. My hope is eternal life. My reason for that hope is the faith of God's elect, Jesus Christ. My certainty, my certainty is God cannot lie. He gave us eternal life through his son, which his faith is what gets us everything that we get. Yes. Not our faith, it's his faith. Our faith is pretty much like our works. It's his filthy rags in the sight of God. Yes. It's only his faith that can give us our hope of eternal life through his son. Do you know him tonight? Let's all stand. I sing a song. Come with me Fast falls the even tide, the darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When other helpers 
So good to see everyone here tonight. What a sweet day we've had in the Lord. And uh, <clears throat> let's remember Amanda in prayer. I understand she's not feeling good. She's got something wrong with her arm. You can't, can't lift it. And I see Grandma's got the baby. Uh, that, that little baby's been passed around. I've seen three or four people have that precious little son. <laughs> but it's so good to see him in church. Uh, look, I, I, I'm, I'm like Jane. I don't care if they cry the whole service. No. I'm just so glad to see him in church. But it's so, thank you all for coming tonight. What a wonderful crowd for a Sunday night. Uh, let's just keep getting the word out and let them know that the word of God's being preached here Amen. and taught here. And that you can get a blessing. We, we sing the, the songs that, that God plays on our heart to sing that are spiritual and are scriptural. <laughs> and we preach the word of God. So I hope that you get a blessing. I, I, I sure have enjoyed studying this. And uh, we're going to, don't forget, uh, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a work day. And uh, how many people is going to put on a chain gang, put, moving them rocks around? I'll get my guys to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find some help. you've already said on the island. <laughs> yeah. Partway there. <laughs> We'll leave that to the young people. Uh, but we do have a lot of little cleaning stuff to do. If you would, come and join us tomorrow night. I, I think we'll have a, a wonderful time of fellowship together. But it, it's so good to be here. I love you. Thank you for support, supporting our church. And uh, I hope you have a, a wonderful week. Uh, Larry, would you dismiss us in prayer tonight? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us and blessed us with to meet with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. and fathers, we've been encouraged through your word and through the theme of today and through testimonies. We pray that we're all better prepared to go out and face the trials of this week, that we can keep Jesus first and foremost in our eyes and in our sight, that we can live a Christian life that you want us to live. Mm -hmm. Father, help us to reach out and share the good news of Jesus with others that they can understand that he gave his life for them and he loves them and he wants them to be part of the body of Christ. Help us as we go on to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs>